Hi, you're listening to the Blues Podcast with me, Big Boy Blower, and my producer, Adam Whaley. How are you doing, Adam? I am doing very, very well. How are you today, Blower? I'm very good. I'm very excited about this little chat that we had with uh, with Beth Hart a few weeks ago. Uh, she's just such a lovely person, and this is... Uh, this is a very exciting little chat we had here. I think she's a very excitable person as well. Exciting is a good word. She's very bubbly. She's a, she's a really she lovely, is. isn't she? You know, you just you just can't not like her. Unconstrained, maybe one would say. Yes, yes. yes. Well, she did. Uh, I mean, she did achieve some things in just in that interview alone that I've never seen anyone do. Uh, for some grapefruit juice down you was probably my favourite part of that interview, actually. I'm not so sure I agree with force, but certainly uh, encourage. <laughs> Persuaded. She, she was very yes, persuasive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, with all the excitement and talk about great juice, we should have a listen to this chat right now, don't you? Yes. Let's have a listen to you chatting to Beth Hart. So here I am with Grammy nominated, the wonderful Beth Hart. Beth, how are you? I'm doing very good now that I'm here with you. It's so good to see you. Again. Good to see you again. <laughs> it's been a little while, hasn't it? But yeah. I think I think the last time we spoke was maybe about four years ago. Mm, God, has it been that long? It has. It has. Wow. I've been hibernating in the woods. Oh, know. yeah, because I did. It was for fire on the floor. And then I didn't do press for uh, Joe's and uh, I uh, right, yeah. Uh, coffee. Yeah, black coffee. Yeah. 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 And I, I also lost my job as well. So it was, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm back. Yes. <laughs> now, um, Ashley, yeah. Last time I saw you, I, I also saw you play. I think it was at the Barbican. Oh, oh, yeah. I think, yeah which How long ago show. was that? That was a while ago, wasn't that? Was about four years ago. Wow. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And then I saw. Actually, I saw you again at the uh, at the Albert Hall. Oh yeah. Which yeah. Was oh, phenomenal. you came to the Albert Hall DVD. Yeah. Uh, Could you tell how terrified I was? I, was? I wasn't on the DVD, but I, no, you weren't on the DVD. <laughs> Where were you sitting there? I think we were you in were, a box or were you down on the no, floor? No, no, no. We were in the cheap seats, of course, of course. <laughs> but I was kind of like the stage is here, and I was on the left somewhere, and it was uh, it was cool. My wife and uh, and I came along, and we were just absolutely uh, gobsmacked by your show. It was really? fantastic. Yeah, I thought I screwed that up so bad. I was so <laughs> horrified. Really? Uh, yeah, I didn't start feeling comfortable until I went alone at the piano. Like I usually start when I'm really scared. I usually will tell the band in the middle of the show. Hey guys, I'm just gonna go to where the fire is even hotter, you know, for some reason yeah. that seems to chase the devil away. <laughs> and I did that, and then when we did Caught Out in the Rain, I, I kind of enjoyed that. But otherwise, the whole time, oh, I just kept thinking everyone thinks this sucks so bad and they wanna leave, but they won't leave because they're nice people and they don't wanna hurt my feelings, <laughs> but they just can't wait for it to be over. And I think we ended up doing like two and a half hour show or yeah. something ridiculous like that. But anyway, it's over now and I survived. So thank God. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say one thing about the show and all your shows that I've seen you at is, and in fact, all, all the albums as well, is, you you know, you always really leave uh, where your heart on your sleeve, you mm. know. And does that get tiring for you? No, I, I don't know any better to not do that. You know what I mean? And yeah. so sometimes, like, I'll pray about it before I go on and I'll say, Please, oh, let me just use them as my therapist. Let me be an entertainer. Let me be a professional. <laughs> but I find that's harder to but be I a think professional. People love it though. I mean, they they love to to, to get close and and you know to know you and and to you know to see what makes the songs tick and and what goes on. So that that, that I think it works in your favor. But thank you, thank you. I I, I would have thought it would get tough. You know, it, it'd be very draining. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's weird for some reason, and it's probably because I started in therapy when I was six, and I was also raised in a family that never downs you for being open. So right. I think I grew up just being trained on how to be open about everything. And my fear is if I'm not open, then the devil gets his way. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. So yeah, that's the only way I know how to chase, chase away darkness is to just be really open about it. I think, you know, this new album you've said is like you know, the, the closest you've ever got. And it's like, you know, the most stripped back you've sort of revealed stuff about. I mean, how many how many layers do you think are left to strip back? Do you think there's any more left you've got? I think if we live a million years, there's always so many layers to strip <laughs> back. Yeah, because life is so astounding. It's so affecting. Even if you want to hide from it all, you can't. The only way to hide from it is to be dead. Yeah. So if we're alive, life's always going to affect us. And it's a beautiful thing because as much as it can hurt, it also sets you free. You know, it's like, I, I don't know how to appreciate love if I don't also know what it feels like to hate. 
And I don't know how to appreciate a good meal if I don't know what it's like to be really hungry or to have eaten crap, you yeah. know? <laughs> and it's, I, I love that about life. I think it works quite well. But, you know, I regress and I go back into thinking, oh, God, why is it this way? And I'll, I'll give you an example. Before I was coming out here, there is a subject on this record that I had never talked about before. And I'd written about it on the song and it felt cleansing and healing. But I always know in my mind, I don't have to say what it is. I can just keep my mouth shut and let it be yep. to the listener, whatever they want it to be. But it was a, it's a very dark subject matter and I was scared. And so I started working with my, um, one of my doctors uh, who I've been with for 20 years, Dr. Appleton, and how to talk about it and how to you know, be present and show up and, and go there. Because um, I just kind of feel like that's the kind of artist that I am. It's, it's, it's just laid out there. Um, I certainly don't think it's for everyone, but it's why I do this. If I didn't have an opportunity to have a record deal or sit here and talk with you about it, I would still be doing that at home and for yeah. my dogs. And I'd be telling them the story, you know, or bring my bird into the room and go, okay, check this out, dude. Because that makes me feel free. It sets me free. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about the dogs. I want to hear about the dogs and the bird. Oh, God, I love my bird. <laughs> so I got a cool story for you, actually, about my bird. So my bird, pie has recently passed away. And no, I had hang pie. Hang on, hang on, hang yeah. on. Let's back up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you, you, first of all, you have a bird. What sort of bird is it? Okay, well, right now I have a parakeet, but I had my canary named pie. Okay, and why is it called for pie? For almost 20 years. Well, Scott's favorite type of pie is rhubarb pie. Right. So I got him two birds. I got a white canary, which I named pie, and then okay. I got a red canary named rhubarb. Okay. Well, right. pie killed rhubarb because pie is a bad motherfucker. This thing will wow. attack anything and everything. <laughs> so I tried to put a few more birds in with pie. He killed them too. And they say the crabbiest and most angry people tend to live the longest anyway. He's the longest living bird I ever had. Yeah. But then he got sick and he was dying. So I was so sad. And we made a beautiful little coffin for him, put roses and all these little yummy things he liked inside. We buried him in the yard. And I said, okay, I got to get another bird. And Scott goes, no, you're not. It's a horrible thing to get a bird and put it into a cage. What are you thinking? <laughs> and I do it because my mother always had birds. So it makes me think of my mother. My mother's alive, but I always want her with me in some way. Yeah. And having a bird in the house makes me think of that. He said, no, you're not getting another bird. And I was so bummed out, but I want to respect my husband. So I threw out all the bird stuff except for the cage and I cleaned it. And guess what happened? This is so awesome. Christmas day, my husband gets a call from our neighbor. He said, hey man, is this your bird sitting out on my windshield of my car? Wow. And Scott goes, what? And he goes outside to go next door to check out this little bird. Now the bird has flown over and is on top of my sister Susan's car in our driveway. And he grabs the bird and brings it and he goes, here's a bird for you. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That is God saying, sorry, Scott, you're wrong. She needs to have her mama with her and she has it with these birds. That is, that is rude. Isn't but, that sweet? But I think it worked out pretty good for Scott too, though, right? I mean, yeah. you know, he got to bring this He's bird happy. for you. Yeah, and like, exactly. You know. And it was on Christmas Eve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, so I, I didn't get you a present, but... I He's know. a bird. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was someone who bought a little bird for their, for like daughter or son and it flew away. Oh. So I know. That's, oh, that's pretty See, harsh, See one right? person's but sadness yes. with another's joy and then reverses. This is much like life though, isn't it? I, mean, I know. <laughs> the roller coaster of life, yeah. right? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. things are up and down all the time. All Especially the in the time. music business, right? Oh my, I, mean, I don't know if it's especially the music business. I think that they just have a spotlight on anything like that in entertainment. So you hear more of the stories that are going on with everyone. But I'm sure yeah. doctors and lawyers and teachers and everybody's having themselves their ups and downs, right? Because that's just life, right? I think in the music industry, you, you tend to put more more hope into something maybe and you know if you're doing a, a job where you're a lawyer or a, you know a, an accountant you kind of know where this is going right mm. but in the music industry it's always things are open and you think it's always changing this could be but yeah. it's not yeah. it, you know so you do yeah, get it's those like gambling those. Yeah. yeah yeah like yeah. jumping up to the back rat table and you don't know how it's gonna go i guess it's that that excitement that maybe keeps us going a little totally bit, it? it's yeah. so exciting absolutely and all that rejection and those things that happen along the way are really the greatest things that happen because it tests your spine it tests how much you really love what you're doing if you get applauded and if you get booed do you still show up and do the do the job and that <laughs> i think is a testament of your love for it, and that's a good thing i love it i want to know the last time you got booed <laughs> well you know what okay today 
No. By myself. Why? No, by myself. Listen, with uh, any criticism count. I've ever received, it's never as harsh as my own criticism to myself. Yeah, I hear that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that happens a lot. Yeah. And then also when my mind is really not doing well, dude, I will see people in the audience booing and telling me I suck. And I'm sitting up there trying to get to this gig and I'll say to my band, did you see that dude doing that? And the band will say, okay, you're being cuckoo head again. That's not happening. And that happens from time to time. And it happens actually more as I get older. Really, yeah? Mm, yeah. Wow, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. So, you know, so you're 47 now. 47. Same age as me. Oh. We're looking pretty What's good, your right? What's your birthday? My birthday is December, 71. So yeah, I'm, I'm 72, months older January 24. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, you and I are right by each other. Yeah, so, you know. We so know, are you Sagittarius? You know, I am, yeah. Aww. Yeah, is that good? I don't well, know. one of my best friends, yeah, Ron is Sagittarius. <laughs> I love Sagittarius. They say you guys always have a suitcase packed. Like you want to travel, you want to go, you want to move. Uh, yeah, you want adventure. <laughs> maybe. I'm quite lazy as well, though. So I think, the two, I think the two, you know. <laughs> but 47, a quarter of a century in the yeah. business. yeah. Uh, it's changed a lot, hasn't it? But yeah, do you think love it? Love how it's changed. Do you think you think it's going the right way? Because I mean, it's so going the right way. It's the best thing ever. Because now you are not resting on the hope of getting a major record deal to let people know you are alive and let people know about the work you're doing. And because of that, there's less of a chance of you being put into a box. Yeah. You get to find your way. I mean, as all artists, no matter what form of art you're doing, you're supposed to seek and try new wells and pull different things out and make crap work and then <laughs> sometimes make beautiful work. And it and it's all in the eye of the beholder anyway. There's been things I've done that I loved and everybody else thought was the worst. Yeah. And then there's been stuff that I did I don't really think was very good and then people react to it in a good way. So it's really interesting and now with social media, like I say, it opens up all these other possibilities, getting to discover all kinds of artists. And I think that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with you, actually. You know, it's, it's never been easy to go out there and find new music, has it? I mean, you know, you just go and you say to some device, yeah. play me Beth Hart, and yeah. there's the brand new album yep. right there. I mean, that's fantastic. It's crazy cool. But do you not think that a little bit, the 70s was like a golden era for 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 the music industry kind of almost it was like i don't know man you know when that scene was happening i didn't get into that i my first scene was way older music i loved all the classical early composers and i loved all the jazz i loved the american songbook a lot of the stuff that frank sinatra was doing Dinah washington was doing and then i loved things like that my mom would play like she play a lot of bob seger <laughs> and uh, the early billy joel and carly simon and then my sisters were playing a lot of beatles my brother was playing a lot of punk, a lot of reggae. He was obsessed with reggae. I got every <laughs> reggae record he had. Wow. So I was just surrounded by a lot of music that I loved. And then I discovered Black Sabbath, which I fell crazy in love with. Rush, um, Zeppelin. Um, but, you know, the things that move me the most to this day is still those incredible songs, those old American songbook jazz songs you know i love those and classical music you know and of course you know the blues and soul but i don't know i think i've never heard a genre that i didn't really love There's so many great <laughs> artists everywhere oh I, I was listening to the new album this morning uh, oh. loving it absolutely really? loving Thank it you. yeah Thank you. Good. Uh, particularly cool. um oh yeah what particularly um, tell me tell me I've, I've completely forgotten the name Is it sugar, sugar shack sugar shack Woo! there you go yeah on. I love it so much. You know why I love that you disco. say that? Disco. I love the disco feel of it. Totally. Yeah. It's like 1982 yeah. disco meets <laughs> Trent Reznor. I love it. And you know that total da -da 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 yeah. was total Rob Cavallo. He's like, because I had that song sitting around. I'd written that with a buddy of mine like seven years ago. And every time I go to do a record, I always turn in everything I've written that year, plus all the stuff that never made it to a record. I do it all the time. Yeah. And boy, Rob was like, hey, man, I think I know what missing in this song and then when he did that we were all live in the studio together and i wasn't even in the booth i was in the, the control room and it was so inspiring what we were, they were they were doing that we just did it and then a whole new part came and it was just it became one of my favorite things on the record and it's not like anything else and do you know what it's about um no tell me okay I want, I so i'm a guess. whore 
<laughs> and I live in a brothel. And I get all I these different that. dudes. Yeah. <laughs> and this one guy comes and he's so awesome that it's so hot that we blow the roof off the place, right? So he goes back to his wife or his sweet, good girlfriend. But I know he'll keep coming back to the sugar shack. And so I stay <laughs> there and I never leave for the rest of my life because I'm waiting for him to come back. Yeah, I love that song. Wow, where did that come from? It's hot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's it's fun though. I can't wait to do it live. Very exciting. I mean, you know, with with disco on the album and you know the blues and the roots and the jazz stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's you know there's so many genres there that you've crossed. Mm. And, uh, do you think there's anything you ever wouldn't touch at all? No. Really? No, I think it would be fun, challenging. I'm sure I would suck, suck at it. And maybe if I kept being willing to suck at it, I would reach something <laughs> that worked. And that's fun. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to the Beth Hart Bavarian Poker Oompa uh, yeah, album. Yeah. In, in that, that case, would be yeah. Cool. yeah. You know what? Now that I can't believe you mentioned Sugar Shack because when we were finished with this record. My um, friend Bianca and I said, wouldn't it be cool to make a whole record of like dance music yeah. like that, where all the lyrics were based around sex and love and fun. <laughs> I wouldn't have to write about anything depressing, like war in my mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. It would just all be fun and light. <laughs> and how fun would that be once, you know? This is something else I was going to ask you, actually. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're always wearing your heart on your sleeve, as I said earlier, and, and you know, writing about stuff that, you know, you go through and you know everybody and and everybody always focuses on the dark stuff right? mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. but do you ever feel like doing just this upbeat kind of like you know well i do come if on you, if you look at the catalog there's always going to be stuff in there that's just filled with fun. yeah like spirit of god is about going to church and having a ball and running up and down the aisles and sweating and the pastor's stomping out devils up there and people are just having fun so and bang bang boom boom yeah even yeah. though there's a little bit of a dark side to it did you know what that song's about? This? You know, uh, Natural Born Killers, the movie? I do, yeah. Those two? Yeah. Didn't they look like they made it so fun to be like mass, like cruising around and being crazy <laughs> punk rockers? And like, <laughs> so there's always, there's always some kind of, I, at least I feel when I'm writing it, there's always some hope within the hopelessness. And I like that. I like the idea of the devil and the angels sitting next to each other. They kind of seem to make each other's colors that much brighter, yeah. that much more noticeable. I love that, that duel. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, the juxtaposition of it. Mm. Okay, let's change, let's change tack a little okay. bit. I want to. I want to. I want you to imagine it's a Sunday. I always have so much fun with him. Really? I'm having so much fun right now. I do. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. You go. You no, go. no, no. You carry okay. on. It's fine. I love it. <laughs> I want you to imagine it's a Sunday. Okay. It's a Sunday morning. Sunday morning. You've had loads of sleep. Yeah. You feel great. Yeah. You have nothing to do for the yes. whole of the day. Yes. What are you going to do? Gardening. Gardening, yeah? Absolutely. Really? Doesn't matter if I'm happy or sad. I wake up, the first thing I do, I stretch out, say my little prayers, brush my teeth, do a little nice look, make the bed, because I'm a very anal and overly clean person. <laughs> Run downstairs, I get the strongest cup of green tea. I take six bags of green tea, put it into a big mug, pour the water over it, get it jacked up, go out, and I'm out in the garden the whole day. I wow. love it. I just love it. Wow, I love so I love as much as it's music. Really? Yeah. I, I can't imagine spending a whole day in a garden working. I can imagine sitting there kind of, you oh, know, just hanging out. It's but amazing. Really? What, what are you going to do? I love sweating. I love to sweat. <laughs> and I get out my rakes and I get out my big shovels and I'm moving trees and plants and shrubs and I'm also trimming and I do a lot of fertilization. I'm always going to either Home Depot or the garden shop by the house. I know everybody's name. They're like my friends, <laughs> my family. And I really, really love it. I really feel like I'm in a peaceful place. And it's very creative gardening, too. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I just, oh, I love it. I always, love it. I always kind of like the, you know, the, the, the low maintenance stuff, though, you know, just like. Oh, the easy. Yeah, you know, trim it once a year and that's fine. And you can sit there and, you know, just, yeah. just look at it and admire yeah. it all year rather than. Yeah. I watched my parents garden all the time and, you know, years ago and they were just forever pulling up weeds and planting yeah, flowers yeah, that lasted for six weeks. Yeah. And it's like. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of work. For like, it is a lot of work. Not a lot of reward, really. But it's, it's like, so worth it. You know what the reward is for me? It's just like songwriting. The reward is not when it's finished. It's the doing of it. It's the seeking. Yeah. And I think that's what I love about gardening is it's the seeking. It's how am I going to get this baby in the right place where it's going to flourish and be thoughtful and take time and work on it? You know, something neat about that. 
Yeah. It's the journey, eh? Not the yeah. uh, not the destination. Yeah. So let's let's go back to the album for a little bit because uh, I wanted to ask you about a couple of the songs. Yeah. Some of them got slightly cheeky sounding titles. Mm, tell me. Like, oh, Rub Me For Luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what that's about? Well, <laughs> you, again, you tell me. <laughs> Joe Bramasa. Okay. It's about Joe Bramasa. Keep going. It's when I see him I heard there was lots of guitar play, reference in there. Yeah. Oh, my God. When I see him play, it is such a turn on. And you know how crazy in love with my husband I am. But you can't not be excited and moved by someone that plays like that. And is that yeah. dedicated? And he is that dedicated. His whole life is dedicated to making music, and he loves it. It wouldn't matter what genre you told him to play. He would love playing it. And that's why I think he's so incredible at it, is that he's always playing that instrument. So yeah, that song is all about me the first time that I got to really record with him in the studio. Because I wasn't really aware of him before that. Right. And then we went in to make that very first record, Don't Explain. And he did some things where I just went, what the frick is going on? This kid is like unbelievable and sweet. But God, it's funny. It's funny how, because if, if I'm, because right now I'm in my like performing gear, right? Yeah, like yeah. I sang today. So I've got more of a swag and a confidence. But as soon as you see me out of this, I, I swear, <laughs> yeah. I don't leave the house. I don't socialize. I'm scared to go out, you know? And that's probably another reason why I love gardening or songwriting. As I get to stay in my own little world because i'm scared to go out in the real world you know <laughs> and i feel like with him it's like that you know when you talk to him in private he's so sweet and quiet and kind of almost withdrawn yeah. and then as soon as he picks up that axe it's like this incredibly powerful man comes out that's fearless yeah it's neat it's neat to watch that do you not think a lot of musicians are like that we're kind of mm. actually a lot of musicians are, are really uh, introverted but mm. it's i think music is something that uh, musicians maybe do to to have that release and you know kind of yeah. to, to to get their feelings across because yeah. most of the time they would just want to sit there going I, you know, I don't want to talk to anyone yeah. just just leave me alone but I know musically when you're on stage it's almost like you are on your own and it's like you can you can just put it out there and it's put it out yeah, there yeah yeah and yeah. it's it's a really good kind of forum for just going yeah yeah. Yeah, Beth, Beth is drinking um, grapefruit. Grapefruit, this mashed up kind Woo! of grapefruit pink thing. It's um, yum, yum, yum. Yeah, it looks it looks great, but I I have a feeling it's no. I bet you a no. million dollars if you sip that, you'd say, you know what? That's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Show me the money, and I'll I'll do it. Really? <laughs> you really take a sip? I don't have any cooties. I don't have anything funky. I'm just a little crazy. Okay. Take a little hit of that. Okay. The glass, that, in my the, the glass is in my hand. The glass is in my hand. Let me stir it just a little bit. Okay. For you, okay? All right. Okay. All the yummy at the top because right now it's kind of gone to the bottom. Actually, it's okay. It's actually okay, yeah, it's isn't actually, it? It's, okay. it's not that bad, is it? Because sometimes it's really sour, and this one isn't. It's good. <laughs> well, good. there you go. Very I've learned something today. Grapefruit is not the evil, evil. And also, fruit our I taste it was. buds are always changing. So if you don't like something, every couple of years taste it that is true. it might have changed that is true yeah. mm. 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 it's true about music as well but yeah. that's another story all together yeah again going back to war in my mind the front cover photo yeah so you kind of just went oh natural on that right i did you know I mean, yeah. i'm 47 the jig is up and i just <laughs> kind of felt like for me to try and hold on it's not that i'm not going to wear makeup sometimes i'm wearing makeup right now but for this record i just felt with the photographer, Greg Waterman, who I've worked with throughout the years, he's a great guy. And I just, I was thinking Johnny Cash. I was thinking uh, male um, songwriters, pretty raw songwriters. Yeah. They kind of hang it out there. And, and I was thinking, why not just kind of have that kind of look? And why not just, and don't photo touch, just let it be yeah. what it is. I get fillers done. I get freaking Botox down once in a while. I'm a vain woman. I don't want to look like an old rag either. But I kind of like that it wasn't all made to be something it's not. Yeah. And, you know. Do you think this is something that might continue? I don't know. It <laughs> so depends on my wild mood. I never yeah. where it's going to go. But I do think that I was feeling more confident, and that's why. So when I'm feeling more insecure, I do notice that I tend to um, try and look like something I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned Johnny Cash a minute ago, and and, and kind of seen the gnarlier and older he got, 
kind of more cool he was. That kind of I loved him so much. Oh my god! And I didn't know of him as a young person. I didn't oh, like right. his music yeah. at all. And I had to get older to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, my one of my neighbours used to take me to school, and he only had one cassette in the car. It was Johnny Cash. And he used to do the same amount of trips every day. So every time we got in the car, it was always on the same track, this cassette. Every single day we went to school, it was uh, one piece at a time. <laughs> I, yeah. I heard that song for about two years. Wow. <laughs> and that was like when I was eight or nine. So it was like, yeah, that was, that was ingrained His into me. His lyrics were incredible, <laughs> weren't they? He, he, he was like, he didn't even care about timing or anything. It was great. Fantastic. Just, you know, just... Just tell the story. Just, just you know, tell the story. Don't let the music get in the way. Yeah. Which is like, you know, sometimes, actually these days, a lot of people could learn a lesson from that, I think, mm. you know. So much is uh, computerized and homogenized and, mm. uh, you know, the, the corners are taken off everything, aren't they? A lot of, you know, yes. and a lot of um, pop in particular. And yeah, you could do with listening to a little bit of Johnny Cash and thinking, it doesn't really matter, does yeah. it? Just tell the story. And also, too, if you have a great song, you don't need tricks to sell it. You yeah. just tell the story, like you say. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the story. Mm. Um, tell me about working with uh, Rob Cavallo. Because oh, so sweet. You oh. you were wanted to work with him for a long time, haven't you? Well, I Not almost, for him, sorry, with him. <laughs> I, I, when I had been dropped by Atlantic and I screwed everything up, um, I started making a new record on my own called Leave the Light On. And I was looking to get re-signed. So he came to the house. And at that time, he was heading up uh, a lot a lot going on over there with Warners, Warner Brothers. Came to the house and he wanted to do it. And then my producer went ahead and sent him a record that had not been mixed. Yeah. Yet. And he heard that. He didn't like it. He passed. So a ton of years go by. A couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, whenever it was. I go to his house, he cooks a lot, and he cooks these for these big parties for a lot, a lot of people, and they set up tables all throughout the house. But the reason why I went is because my best girlfriend, Erica's sister, is his wife for many, many years since right. they were kids. So I was going over there, and he had a piano there, and I just got up and played a few songs, and he came up to me after, and he said, I want to produce those three songs if you're cool with that. And I said, yeah, of course. And then it turned into a whole record. Yeah. But I'll tell you something about that dude, man. I mean, I, I didn't know of a lot of what he'd done. I knew that he'd done a lot of the Green Day stuff. He had signed them, um, as well as he did Alanis Morissette's Uninvited. And and that song, Uninvited, that he did of hers was my favorite thing she'd ever done. Right, yeah. The production was phenomenal. And anyway, uh, I was totally on board to do it, but when I worked with him, the way he worked with me, the level of kindness and sensitivity and respect, how easy he was, open to everything, um, pretty amazing. I was really lucky. The songs were even luckier. He took care of those <laughs> right, songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the initial talent had to be there, but I mean, you know, he's wow. he's made them sound great, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Yeah, he has, and it's yeah. made me just love what he's done with these songs. Each and every song was treated just the way it deserved to be treated. So Beautiful. Do you kind of feel vindicated now that he's sort of got on board and gone, yeah, 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 yeah? Or do you think this is what I was trying to tell you all along? Come on, you know, it's like no. I mean, I'm proud of every record I've done. Sure, there are some that make me kind of cringe like uh, my California record I could I think should have been left acoustic because the day I, whenever the songwriting took place the recording was always done that day so you got the live right. piano and vocal and that was or or vocal and guitar and it was acoustic and then all these layers were put on top of it and then it was put out and I was really disappointed in that um the last Joe record I did black coffee absolutely disappointed in that my very first uh, really, yeah? Uh, yeah my first major label with atlantic immortal it was such a hard rock thing we were doing and it wasn't captured so but i love them all but there are certainly some that make me go oh this is too bad <laughs> but this is not one that i feel oh this is too bad i really really genuinely enjoy listening to it it's like i'm listening to a different artist when we mastered Usually I listen to a record through two, three times, never, ever again, unless I have to refer to some parts maybe that I've forgotten. Yeah. And on this one, I remember I took off for a six week tour the day after mastering. And I listened to it every day for those six weeks on tour. And it was like I discovered a new artist. Cause every time I find someone new that I love, I, I study and listen. And uh, it was like that. 
It wasn't even like I was listening to my record. It was bizarre. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's <laughs> awesome. And I would send him messages every day. I love you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Poor guy. I was probably bugging him so bad. But I just wanted him to know how grateful I was to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, the album that he passed on, Leave the Light On, mm-hmm. I mean, that went platinum, right? It did well in so a few it's, countries. You know, yeah, yeah. And I love that album. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did pretty good. You know, would you would you would you love to hear a version that he produced? No, 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 no. Is that I've done let and dusted all now? Those yeah, pieces go. Yeah, but there is an idea with Mark Hornsby, his, and he is the man who engineered and mixed uh, the Royal Albert, mm. and he's a lovely guy. And there's an idea for me to go in with just piano vocal of whichever songs we choose from my whole catalog and build an 88 piece orchestra around it and wow. do like 12 songs like that and i think that might be wow. fun that you know? sounds pretty good yeah, yeah that might be cool <laughs> so we would revisit things something like light on because i would definitely have that song be one of them you know i think yeah. out of the whole back catalog i mean can you pick favorites now or is it like of songs picking a favorite or dog or something yeah songs songs, songs. yeah well, sky that- full of clover has always been one of my very favorite songs um and that's just a direct song to god it's all about faith and having faith that there is something that is so wonderful and amazing it's got our back it's got everything and what we deem as bad and what we deem as good is just our own unevolved misperceptions Mm -hmm. but his perception is not and that is that kind of song it's just all hope love god so i love that song i love my california um, I adore and worship my husband. He's the greatest thing I've ever experienced on this planet as long as I've been alive. If I lived for a billion years, I'd never see or feel something as beautiful as Scott. And that song really talks about my thankfulness to him for healing me and loving me and staying with me. I am a <laughs> hard woman to be with. And he, I think, gets entertained by it. I really do. Really? Oh, yeah. I think he likes tough women. Do you think he likes the challenge? I do. Yeah. yeah. And he's so confident of a person, not cocky, but I think confident of a person that nothing I do makes him feel um, slighted or less than. And he just has a lot of empathy and, and patience. And, and, and thankfully so, you know, he is definitely entertained. But he says <laughs> that the reason why he stays in there is because who I am behind addiction and mental illness, who I really am, he always says, is someone that makes him laugh and makes him feel so loved. So maybe that's the good thing I bring, is I make him feel loved, you know? Which is basically what we all want, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's right? the best thing, right? Yeah. 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 What else is to yeah. strip everything back? What else is to... Yeah. Just talking about addiction and stuff there, obviously, yeah. you, you know, you, you're kind of good with things these days. You're well, all... it's always a work in progress. I never like to say, that's it. I'm cured. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because it doesn't work that way in my life. I've had a couple of uh, long bouts of sobriety and much longer bouts of using. Right now, if I make it to January 3rd, I'll have five years, no booze and no drug drugs. The drugs I take yeah. are for my mind. They're totally non-addictive. They're medications that are specifically for bipolar one. But then I got also turned on to some wonderful vitamin therapies that I take now. And then also CBD oil isolate. Right, that's yeah. That's an isolate, so it's not full spectrum. It only has one compound, and that's the CBD oil. And that thing has been so great for me because it's going to lengthen my lifespan because I don't have to take so much of one of my head meds that causes a lot of terrible side effects. And I'm not gonna mention what that is because I don't wanna turn anyone off from that. Yeah. <laughs> but by taking the CBD, that has made it so I could lower these medications. And it's it's like I'm on those medications at a higher level. That's what the CBD is doing. That's, that's so great. It's great. And it's got no side effects, nothing terrible for you. So that's a beautiful thing. Being here and lots of good things about the CBD stuff. Yeah. It needs to be... It's gonna. It's, revol- it's yeah. revolutionizing the mental uh, health community. We all need some help. For yeah, sure. I mean, do. I know <laughs> I've yeah. been there for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so what? What do you do now these days to you know get a bit of a party on? Was it a bit of gardening? Is that? Oh God, to get a bit of a party on. Listen, <laughs> I don't need to drink or do any drugs to get a bit of a party on. My brain is always in a party. That's why I take medication to chill the motherfucker out. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So I wake up with tons of energy. What I love about being home is that when i'm home i get to do my manic cleaning because i love to clean i get to swim for an hour i get to do all my gardening and i get to write and vocalize i get to work with my coach so i'm doing things where i'm using my body and then i cook a lot for my friends my family so i'm always go 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 when i come on the road 
I always go through a difficult changeover because the road doesn't yeah. let you. People always say, oh, my God, aren't you tired when you're on the road? It's way more exhausting being at home than it is on the road. Because on the road, you're limited. I can swim. I can do the show. And I can take little walks. But I can't really get my hands dirty and get into things, right? So there's a split there. But... um I think that uh, my party now is just doing all the things that are so much fun. You know, like gardening, like cooking, like being with friends and family, like going to church. I love going to church. I love it. It's so fun. I don't agree with half the stuff they talk about in there, <laughs> but I don't have to because I'm just with people who are looking for the light. Yeah. And yeah. those are the kind of people I want to be around. Yeah. You know? yeah. Do you think that's almost an age thing maybe or it could be i think gardening might be yeah i hear a lot of other women my age they get into gardening and i i don't know i don't know if that's our natural mother in us of wanting to nurture and watch something grow and plant and yeah. you know what i mean i don't know what that is i never had children but there is something that seems really nurturing about it that i love yeah and it's not harmful to your body. It's, you know what I mean? You can overdo it. I definitely overdo it. I have Scott set up spotlights in the yard at night <laughs> when I'm not done with my 19 hour run. He must love you so, so much. Manic. And he's just like this, come out of the yard. It's four in the morning. The neighbors are looking into the yard. Come on. I'm like, I'm almost done, man. I just got to take this little lemon tree. She's almost ready to go. I swear to God. You know, the neighbors are going, she's burying something back there. I know, you know she's burying like, a skeleton. It, it's, it's, is Scott still there? Is he still oh. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott's but okay. But all our yeah. neighbors are all musicians anyway, so they're all freaking happy. Okay, out of their mind. so they're probably and used they're to. And they're so yeah. cool, yeah. <laughs> and they're up all night in their studios making so much noise, so it's all good. <laughs> Where to next, then? What, so what do you see? we're doing this promo run. Yeah. Yeah, and I think after England, we're going to Poland, I believe. I think we're hitting Holland. Um, we've just come from New York and Paris. Um, but I think it's a total of about four and a half weeks of promo. And then I go home and I'm going to start doing rehearsals with the band. Do you think promo is more wearing than, uh, than the actual gigs? Well, promo is <laughs> way harder for me. Yeah. Because I feel like a dick, like trying to say, oh, you should, hi, I'm bad, you should buy my record or, oh, come to my... Yeah, it just yeah. seems kind of gross to do that. Yeah. But I understand that there is a respect that I show to the record company doing that. And also, I think there's a bit of a respect that you show to an audience does want to know about what's going on and why. Yeah, They don't sure. just want to watch yeah. you sing it. They want to know why you, you sang it in the first place or wrote it in the first place. Because I know that's how I feel too. Whenever a new artist comes out or someone that I love comes out and I want it like Lana Del Rey, I'm the biggest fan. So I go and look on YouTube of all her interviews about her latest record, which is so great, by the way. She's so great. Do you like her? Not a She's lot. Too girly Not too. a lot. I find it a little bit too... Depressing? It, it grates on me slightly. Really? Yeah. I love her so yeah. much. I'm so madly in love with her. I would marry her and Scott. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? I don't, uh, she's, no, she's nowhere as good as you. That's what I would say. Oh, no I way. She's so much better. Oh no my way. God. No way. No. <laughs> she's got like a crooner's voice and she's drop dead gorgeous. And then her lyrics to me is like a living Leonard Cohen in a female hmm. body. And I was such a fan of Leonard Cohen. Oh my God. We lost him. Yeah. He was the greatest. Yeah. Such a great writer. We've lost so many people lately, haven't we? Yeah. It's like yeah. dropping like flies. I you know. know. Like, okay, who's who's I next? Know. You know, I it's know. Uh, God, this is a this is a morbid one. It's okay. I like morbid. What do you think when you go? People Ooh. will be saying and, and, and you know oh. what do you, what do you, what do you want matters. to leave behind? I don't think that matters. Um what do I want to leave behind? I think that these songs, I would love to see them covered by other people. And in terms of leaving behind any part of my life or my story, I would like for people maybe to be a little inspired by no matter how crazy you think you are or how much of a loser you think you are or how unvaluable you are, just know there's an ass for every face. <laughs> and if I can get Scott anyone can get something wonderful that will love them as they are and the beauty about that kind of love is it teaches you to love the very things or at least giggle at the very things that you hate about yourself and not take them so seriously and heavily it's just a journey right and i, I would like to leave that behind that hope of god and love and you know yeah 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 sounds good to me uh 
I was going to finish it there, but one last thing I wanted to touch yeah. on that you just said. Okay. You'd love to hear a cover of one of your songs. Is nobody ever covered any of your songs? Yeah, before? sometimes people cover it, but like I would love to hear someone like like an Aretha Franklin right. or something like that yeah. sing uh, "Tell Her You Belong to Me" because I wrote that song for my dad. I love that song so much, but I'm not a good enough singer to really deliver that song. And I remember even writing it, thinking, "God, I would wish someone just a bad mother, like Jennifer Hudson, or just one of those that are severely brilliant singers." take that and just take it to church you know yeah yeah that would be so neat that would be really neat <laughs> I, I always say careful what you wish for i had a song i wrote once and somebody covered it and it was awful and i was thought it, is, is that awful? is that what is that how you hear my song it made me feel like Aww. oh it's just like oh Aww. but that's that's another story entirely yeah. so I, I'm, I'm glad that people are going to cover your songs and do and great jobs with them. And, uh, and uh, but I want to I want to plant a seed in your head about that. What you just said though about who covered your song? And yeah, you do it very good. This is the beauty of art. Van Gogh, one of the greatest painters of all time, never sold a painting. Yeah, died in his mind as a drunk and as a loser. If you look at the most prized and valued paintings on the planet, I think his he has three of his in the top 10. Yeah. Okay. So to you, that person maybe destroyed your song or didn't do very good, <laughs> but I bet you there are a lot of people around that person who thinks it's awesome. Maybe. And you had something to do with that joy that goes to those people that I love it. I think I made their mums very happy. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. <laughs> That's <good>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of mean for saying that now, but yeah, yeah you're right. You, but you know, know what? I, no, don't be positives. mean. That's so yeah. human. Yeah. I get it. I've heard some people cover some of my stuff, and I go, "Yes, I'm like, oh, this is a loser." But no, there's <laughs> someone else that that might love that, and that's yeah. cool. Hopefully, yeah. we can. All, we all love something different, are you? And that's, yeah, that's what's important. Thank God. Yeah. Beth, it's been absolutely amazing to talk to you again. It's so you're good so to talk to you again. <laughs> you're such a sweet vibe. You're always so uh, bubbly and lovely and, you know, and, and have something to say, which is which is great because uh, uh, that's what people want to hear. Thank you so, so much. So there you go. That was me, big boy bloater, chatting to the lovely Beth Hart in London a few weeks ago. Oh, she was just absolutely so fantastic. What a pleasure, she, Mr. Mr. Adam. Yes. Yes, totally a pleasure. Um, it's always great whenever we get to see Beth. And it's just one of those lovely, lovely people. She lights up a room, you know, she great certainly atmosphere, does, great vibe. She? Yeah. Yeah. There's always lots and lots of energy and excitement when Beth's in the room, isn't there? She, Definitely. Yeah. She's wonderful. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to the Blues Podcast. A big thank you to the Mascot Label Group for supporting us. And uh, if you want to know what we're up to, then uh, get on Instagram and follow us. Yeah, that's right. You can follow us on Instagram. And the handle is at the Blues Podcast. So check us out on Instagram and see what's coming up next. Uh, what is coming up next, big boy? I think um, I think I'm going to have a little lie down after all that. Actually, it was very exciting, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. It was very exciting. Uh, you deserve it. Well done. A lie down in a dark room with some grapefruit juice. I think <laughs> it's me, big boy bloater, and Adam. And thank you for listening to the Blues Podcast. Catch us next time. Bye. Bye.